A lot of mid-cap IT companies to deal with and one such company is Zensa. They've managed to beat the expectations when it comes to top line and very resilient margin picture. So let's welcome on board Manish Tandon, the MD and CEO of the company, to talk to us about how much of this is actually sustainable. Manish, hi, good to speak with you. Thanks for making time for ET Now. To begin with, let's discuss your margin performance itself. You've managed to maintain it almost at 15.7% uh, despite the wage hike. Uh, I do understand that there was a one-off element here, but barring that, how was the performance? performance on operational front and more importantly is this kind of performance sustainable yeah i think uh, on margins uh, while uh, people like to talk about margins and revenues uh, differently uh, i would i like uh, to talk about overall margin growth uh, for the company and i'm very pleased to report to the investors that in the first half of this year uh, we have made more uh, profit than we, what we had done for the entire full year of FY23. Uh, as to uh, margin sustainability and the performance, uh, our performance was uh, pretty good considering the uh, market situation that we have where anything with a plus sign is good and we grew 0.6% in revenue terms. Uh, but uh, we grew tremendously both in uh, earnings per share uh, and in the profit after tax. So um, uh, a very good performance overall. Uh, from a business perspective, I can tell you that except for the um, high tech as a vertical, we are seeing all around growth. Uh, and if uh, high tech as a vertical had been even flat, then we would, see, we would have seen a, a 3.5 to 4% sequential growth even in our top line. So overall, I'm very satisfied with the performance. Also, I believe that uh, our margin guidance uh, has been EBITDA margins in the mid-teens. We are doing much better than that. So that gives us uh, some headroom to invest in our business um, for revenue generation and invest in our clients. Right, Mr. Tandon, this is Vinny joining in the conversation as well. Right, you were talking about your EBITDA margins, you know, the mid-teen levels is what you're talking about as well. Uh, but, you know, as of now, that is at 14 to 16% range is what is there. So, is that sustainable going forward? And also, you know, some of the analysts actually believe that your margins may have peaked. So, what is your view on that? Do you concur with that? And maybe this is the level that will go on and we'll see that at this 14 to 16% range. Oh, I think, uh, as I said, our stated goal is to have an EBITDA margin in the 14 to 16% range. Currently, we are at 18.6%. And as I continue to maintain, there is a trade-off between margin margins and revenue growth. In fact, I look at uh, the overall performance uh, of the company as a sum of uh, margin uh, percentage and revenue growth percentage. So what it means is that if I invest more in my business, uh, that will lead to a higher revenue growth, but may lead to a lower margin and vice versa also. So for me, it is all about optimizing the net profit or the earnings per share. And that is what we are focused on instead of looking at uh, just revenue growth or just margin percentage. Focusing on profitable growth and EPS remains that important factor, but you talked about how the uh, headwinds in the high-tech vertical is what impair your performance when it comes to the revenue growth as well. Talk to me about how the second half of the year is looking like, especially Q3 on account of seasonality and furloughs is usually a weak quarter. Are you expecting a weakness to be more than the historic average that we have seen? Uh, what's your take on how Q3, Q4 are likely to pan out? Well, uh, if you noticed, uh, we had a strong performance on the order bookings uh, uh, last quarter. We uh, booked orders worth 195 million or so, which was uh, about 30% higher than last quarter. So that is a positive sign, but uh, you know the seasonality of the industry has not gone away. So we expect that, uh, like in the past, uh, whatever has been the impact of the uh, furloughs and uh, the uh, lower number of working days and shutdowns, etc., will happen this year also. Um, if we can sustain our, uh, if we can sustain our pipeline uh, and our uh, order bookings, uh, then obviously Q3 
four should look better. So that's the big question: Is that hundred and ninety-five million dollar kind of uh, deal win sustainable then? Uh, I hope so. I think we are seeing a good pipeline. Uh, overall, our pipeline has see. I mean, you start at the top of the funnel, and order booking is the bottom of the funnel, right? So to say that whether the uh, order bookings are sustainable or not, you have to look at your pipeline. And I can tell you that our pipeline is also up uh, even as we speak. So um, I'm hopeful that it's uh, uh, that we'll continue to perform well on order bookings. You know, uh, what I also want to understand is in terms of, is there any delay in execution that you're seeing? Especially because, you know, uh, I'm asking this because your revenue growth is lagging your peers. So is that one of the concerns in terms of execution? No, there is no execution uh, um, issue that I, uh, I see. It is, uh, first of all, I don't think, uh, at least in the last three quarters since I've been there, our uh, revenue growth has been lagging. Uh, overall, we have grown sequentially uh, in revenues uh, by 2%, 2%, and 0.6%. So um, it is not that uh, the revenue growth is, uh, is lagging. Uh, but uh, again, the market has been tough. Uh, those who had the momentum going in uh, to this financial year have shown better revenue growth. I had... Uh, when I came in, I had uh, actually um, uh, no momentum. Um, it was actually, uh, I inherited a quarter after which, where the decline was close to 6-7%. So, um, from that perspective, I think we are doing pretty well. No, you have arrested the decline and of course the street has given a thumbs up to that. That's quite evident, Manish, in the stock price which is up 160% on a YTD basis. That at a time when rest of the IT companies have been very sluggish. But talk to me about that then. What is the focus area? We have managed to arrest the decline right now, stabilize it at 0.2%. When do you see that recovery and growth coming back? Is it likely to happen in the next couple of quarters or given the environment, you are hopeful of that only in FY25? See, Q3, next quarter, is a very, very tough quarter for everyone. And it's going to be, I mean, so it will follow the historical trends that uh, we have seen. Uh, Q4, if we execute on execute well on our um, uh, pipeline, then Q4 should look better. Uh, but I think we will uh, finally see very, very good, better, much better momentum. I wouldn't say very good. Uh, bad, but much better mo momentum in Q1 of next year uh, rather than in H2 of this one. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to check with you was also on the pricing front because, you know, when we were speaking to your rest of the peers as well, they did allude to the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the competition is, of course, heating up, uh, but it hasn't become irrational. What's been your take? Are you seeing any pressure right now in terms of renegotiations with clients or price uh, cuts or even any deal cancellations or any discussion of any, you know, deals being put on hold with clients as such? No, I don't. Uh, I see delayed decision making. I see, um, you know, that uh, renewals, uh, people, even for renewals, clients are taking a longer time uh, to arrive at uh, the decision. But uh, I am not seeing uh, any, um, uh, any, you know, stoppages and, and so on because clients do not want to uh, spend money. Uh, also on rates, uh, we are not seeing, uh, on rates, thanks to inflation, we are not seeing uh, a major push on rate reduction because I think our clients also are going through uh, this cycle. and uh, But they are definitely looking at cost reductions, uh, which is basically trying to move more work offshore, offsite, um, etc. So, uh, uh, because of the inflationary environment, the cost cutting, the cost reduction has not really led to uh, rate reductions per se, as such, at least for us.
Right, Mr. Tandan, you know, thank you so much for joining in with us this afternoon on ET Now, giving us an understanding of what we should be expecting from the company going forward in the second half of the year, how we should be expecting for Zinzar Tech. Uh, that was uh, Manish and an MD and CEO at Zinzar Tech talking about overall their performance and uh, looking to maintain their margins at mid-teen levels. Profits already much better in the first half of the year than FY23 combined. So keep an eye out on that. ZR Tech on this year basis, 150% approximately return is what we have seen. But uh, on that note, viewers, we're going to sip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more updates on the market after this break.